everyone has a story to tell. The last ditch. Whether you're three years old and your biggest accomplishment is making it to the toilet, or 103 years old and armed with a two million page memoir, you've done something worth talking about. What happened to your hair? It got scissored. And you've likely talked about it. Over half of the dialogue that dominates conversations is composed of the exchange and discussion of stories. What is life anyway if not a compilation of tales and experiences from a singular perspective? What's the coolest thing that's ever happened to you? Or the coolest thing you've ever done? Mm. Hold on a really big roller coaster. How old were you at the time? What? How old were you when it happened? I think I don't know. You're probably wondering how all of this baby-slash-toddler footage applies to what I'm saying. For starters, this beautiful redhead is my nephew Noah. His age has yet to reach double digits in Earth years, but he is not an inconsequential being. He is the sum of everything that has happened to him and everything that will happen to him. This is a short sample of what happens when Mommy's gone! Any story that he chooses to tell has meaning, value, and the potential to change the course of someone's life. He'll likely grow up in a world where his media is bombarded with nihilism and the idea that everything he does is insignificant. Humans are less numerous than the stars in the sky, after all, and infinitely smaller. Nobody's story really seems to matter in the grand scheme of things. Uh oh! Not again! Otto was hitting me again. What? He was hitting me again. He did? <laughs> I'd like to argue that every story, no matter how simple, has significance. Everybody has a story to tell, and every story has a purpose. Um, I like to play video games. Like all video games, like I'm not a superhero. Just as beauty is in the eye of the beholder, the perspective of the observer determines the relevance of the story. To me, it's the stars that are insignificant. Don't get me wrong, I'm fascinated by astronomy, but... As Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's character Sherlock Holmes says, knowing whether the Earth revolves around the sun or the moon is inconsequential to me. What affects me as a human being on planet Earth is other human beings. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an elf. An elf? What do you think you'll do when you're an elf? I'll work for Santa. Noah's story is pretty simple. He was the firstborn of the three Winters family children. He spends his childhood attending Boy Scouts, thriving in school, participating in soccer, playing video games, and just generally goofing off. He's a smart kid and he tends to dream big. I like mystery books. Oh, you do? Huh? Do you think you could be a detective one yeah. day? You think you could? If the elf thing doesn't work out? Yeah. Don Draper from the hit AMC original series Mad Men once said, When a man walks into a room, he brings his whole life with him. I'm absolutely captivated by this, the life stories of other people. This is the basis of my study on humans and the stories that we tell. All that I really know is my own experience and everything that I've been through. There are things that I'm not capable of, chances I haven't taken, and opportunities that I've gone without. As a direct result of this, I live half of my life through the stories that other people share. Oh, it's a monster! <laughs> Run! Oh, we're safe. We're safe. That isn't to say that I wish I had their lives. I'm very happy with how my own is playing out. But there's something very special in being able to imagine what it must be like in someone else's shoes, to learn from their mistakes and accomplishments, or just be generally entertained by their observations, encounters, and undertakings. So it's recording all of this I'm saying? Mm hmm So like, when I'm like, that's recording that? Yeah. Uh, Is that cool? Uh -huh. As far as I know, we're only permitted one life. To fully utilize our time, I think it's essential to share in the joys and sorrows of others. 
Whether orally, through video, music, the written word, or artwork, documenting our stories is a good way to manufacture something more long withstanding and unchanging. This partially allows them to be effectively shared with other people and partially helps us not to forget them. All right, what's your favorite story? Oh, so hard. Drama still the treasure of the Emerald Eye. Memories are visually linked. Photo albums and home videos assist us in triggering long-forgotten emotions that go along with the experiences we've had. Memory is mostly beneficial on an emotional level, but there is also value in noting how much we've changed since the existence of our past selves. Many people think that our world is too obsessed with capturing moments to really relish in the experience itself, but I disagree. It's just too difficult sometimes for our brains to recall specific moments without that trigger, especially if we were very young at the time. Noah provides a very important light in my life. He's influenced many of my decisions by simply existing. I don't know where I'd be right now without him. But his world might not impact you at all. He's a child, with childish desires and dreams. You might listen to his story and walk away completely unchanged. But I don't know you. These snippets from his life, simple and short though they may be, might be exactly what you need to see and hear today. That's the beauty of storytelling. And it's why I think we need to keep at it, regardless of what value we think we should be placed on our own experiences or thought processes. How are you today? Good. And what'd you do? Play. What else? Outside. There are too many different perspectives in the world to consider any story truly insignificant. Did you run out of energy yet? Yep. <clears throat> Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>